Come on, Bridge Church. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Isn't there power in be being better together? You got to hug somebody before you sit down. You got to find one person. You got to hug somebody. Hug somebody. You can't hug them from a distance. You can't hug them from a distance. You got to hug them. Hug them, hug them, hug them. Well, welcome, Bridge Church. Good to see you this morning. You guys excited to be here? Welcome back. Look at your neighbor say, welcome back. Welcome back. Say, I know you've been gone, but I'm glad you're back. I'm just kidding. I don't know if you've been gone, but I've been gone. Been gone the last couple of weeks, but it is so good to be back. Man, I love our Bridge family. Love being here, love celebrating, love worshiping. God is doing some incredible things. Come on, Pastor Joey. I don't know if you agree with me, but God is doing some incredible things. I love the series that we've been on, and, and I haven't been here, but I've been watching from a distance, and Pastor Rob and Pastor Bobby Joe, and, and I came in this morning, and, and a couple people grabbed me by the side, and they said, man, Josh, they said, we missed you, but we want to let you know we hope you're not preaching today. I said, dang. All right. They said, every single week has been on fire and on point. And can I just tell you, it feels so good to just be able to be away and, and God continues to show up. And, and so I reassured them. I said, you know what? I said, today is your day because I am not preaching today. We got another special treat, another incredible leader on our team, Pastor Joey up here, one of our youngest, finest leaders dynamic young man, leads our neighborhood stuff, but does so much more than that, has a heart of gold. He texted me while I was away and, and he said, man, Josh, I just want to let you know how much I love you. And uh, that's just totally his heart. And so I just know and believe God's going to speak through him this morning and I'm excited for the word he's going to share. So Bridge Church, can we make some noise for Pastor Joey this morning as he gets ready to share? Come on, brother. At the table. Well, good morning, Bridge Church. You guys ready for this morning? Man, like Pastor Josh said, my name is Joey. I'm one of the pastors here, but this series has been incredible. Just give it up for Pastor Bobby Joe and Rob one more time. Like seriously, um, they do so many things that many people don't see, and they have invested in my life more than I could ever imagine. And so I'm just so excited for this series. If you're new with us, we're talking about the se our series title is called The Good Life. Someone say The Good Life. Good life. The good life. good life. How many people know that when you follow Jesus, man, it is a good life. Man, it is a good, good life. But we're walking through a book called First John. And just give you a background of kind of what's going on in John's life. John was a church leader, in the, and back in the day, he was a follower of Jesus. And what had happened was he had planted a church, and he left. And he's writing these letters to this church, realizing that there's some things that actually aren't going really well. And what's happening with the church is that there's groups from the outside that are coming in and saying, look, there's more than just Jesus to the good life. They're saying, look, if you, you think hard enough, if you believe hard enough, if you do all these things, then you can experience the good life that God has called you to live. But see, John is writing and he's trying to tell his people, he's trying to say, look, the good life that, that you desire to live is only found in Jesus. It's only found in Jesus. There's no am butter about it. It's Jesus period. Someone say that with me. Jesus, period. And what John is trying to get across is, look, it's just Jesus. And when you live in Jesus, everything changes. And so again, the first week, Pastor Rob talked about this idea about how when you experience Jesus, you experience life. And you experience life to the fullest. Second week, we talked with Pastor Bobby Joe. She talked about how even the mountains in your life the trials, the things that happen, they can actually be a blessing. They can actually develop this life that God has called us to, to live. But the third week, this week, we're going to be talking about building a lifestyle 
of forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the most powerful weapons to living a free life in Christ. It's one of the most powerful things that we can embrace to fully live this life that God has called us to live out. But who knows that forgiveness is not easy? Someone raise their hand. Forgiveness is not easy. People hurt us. People, people say things to us. People do things to us that maybe we don't even want to talk about. But it's in the forgiveness of those people that we find true freedom. That we, that we find this life that God has called us to live. When I was a kid, uh, me and my sister, we used to play in the basement a lot. And uh, I was probably six years old. She was probably three. And I remember we were in the basement and we were just messing around. I was sitting on the couch and she was running back and forth playing some game. I don't know what she was doing. But about two minutes in, I was just like, you know what? I'm kind of tired of her doing this. I don't know. I was just getting annoyed. I was, I'm the older brother, and so my job is to love her and pick on her at the same time. And so she's running backwards, and she's doing this thing, and I get this idea. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stop this in a creative way. So what I do is, again, I'm six years old. Keep in mind. So I go back. I grab a couch cushion, a large couch cushion. Now, if you're six years old, a couch cushion is actually pretty heavy, okay? So I walk back, I grab the couch cushion, and I wrap it around my hands. And I get this idea. And, and she's kind of running back, back and forth, and I'm kind of like, kind of aiming at her, you know? Like, how can I, you know, hit her? <laughs> and so I get this idea, and I pick it up, and it's kind of heavy, and I'm like, I can't throw it at her. So I'm going to spin like this. And I kind of, you know, so I see her, I spin, and I just uh, throw it as hard as I can. The couch cushion, she's running back and forth, and the couch cushion catches her hip, and she kind of, her body turks like this into like an L shape, right? Uh, and she kind of make that, that made that noise when your body gets hit really hard, it just goes, uh, and she falls down, and I was like, oh gosh, that was not my plan, but it kind of was my plan. I don't know. I didn't really know. But she was on the ground crying. And if you ever were an older sibling, or if you have kids who, there's older siblings and and the kids you have, you know what the older siblings do when they hurt the youngest. I'm so sorry, 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 I'm so sorry. Hit me. Make up for it. Hit me in the face. Hit me in the arm. And so that's exactly what I did. I ran up, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I remember saying, specifically, Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? And though that was a petty moment in my life, and that she didn't have to forgive me, I truly believe that there's an, there's an internal deep desire for us to seek forgiveness in our lives. I believe that it is wired in us to find healing and forgiveness Because I believe that when we feel forgiveness with another person, we actually are healed. We actually are fully healed. There's this desire for peace in our life. There's this desire to be okay with another person. And can I, I know that there's people in this room who have hurt you. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I know there's people in this room that have hurt you. I know there's people in this room that have said things to you that you may not ever want to say again. There's people in my life that they have done things to me, and can I say that it is just so easy to brush them off. It's so easy to let them go. But there's a quote. They say, bitterness and hate only imprisons yourself. The only prisoner in bitterness and hate is is you. And today, we're going to go on this journey to learn three practical steps to build a lifestyle of forgiveness. Because I believe if we can build this in our life, if we, can, if we can really own this, if we can really embrace what Jesus has done for us and give it to other people, those people who have hurt you tremendously, if you can forgive them, then I believe that we can be the world changers that God has called us to be. And today we're getting free. Who's ready to get free this morning? Who's ready to get free? So we're in 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. If you have your scriptures, that's great. If you don't, it's going to be on this 
on the screen again, John is talking to his church. And he's saying this. I'm going to read through it real quick. He said this, For this is the message you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. So it's a story back in the Bible. This man killed his own brother out of greed. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Listen to what he says there. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Can I tell you that unforgiveness will have death in our heart? It'll suck the life out of our heart. It will keep us in that dead place. Next slide. He said, anyone who hates a brother or sister, and this is where it gets interesting, is a murderer. I read that, I was like, whoa, whoa. A murderer? That's a little harsh, ain't it? But he's, again, he's comparing us to Cain, who murdered his own brother. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. I'm going to, I'll read 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words and speech, but with action and truth. And John is saying, look, if you want freedom, if you want the life that Pastor Rob talked about, you have to forgive those people. Because if you find hate in your heart, it will be nothing but a prison for you. If you have a hate for another person who wrongs you, it will be nothing but prison. But the first lesson that John is trying to teach his church, he said, if you want to live a lifestyle of forgiveness, forgiveness takes Owning your hurt. You see, if you notice something that John says, he calls us the murderer. He doesn't blame it on the person who you have that hate against. He says, no, 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 no. The hurt in the, in the healing process is not on the other person. It's on myself. He says, you have to own the hurt. It's not on them, it's on you. He doesn't say, oh church, you know, I know those people did those things and you built that hate up against them. I know you did that. And so just wait till the rest of your life and maybe someday you'll be okay. He says, no, 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 no. I know what they did to you was wrong, but the healing process and the hurt that's in your own heart is your responsibility to take care of. And I've been in a life experience right now where someone has hurt me. And it's easy to blame, right? Anybody with me? It's easy to blame that person. And what we do is we take people who are hurt, who hurt us, and we expect them to heal us. Man, maybe one day that person will forgive me. Well, act, well not forgive me, ask for forgiveness. Maybe someday they'll come and apologize for what they said to me. Maybe someday they're going to come and write me a letter because once they write me a letter, I know I'll be better. And what John is saying is this is on you, Joey. This is on you to take ownership of. We have to take ownership of it. It's on us. It's not on them. Because at the end of the day, it's about us finding freedom. Anybody ever been in a fight with your spouse or brother or sister, anybody? Am I the only one? Okay, all right, just make it sure. A few weeks ago, me and my wife got in a little bickering argument. I was over something really petty. And uh, you, they usually start pretty petty. And I'm just kind of, oh, I'm, oh, I'm just, you know, frustrated. And, and I'm kind of walking around the house like this. And, you know, head down, I'm just gonna do stuff. I'm gonna clean the house or something. And I never clean the house. I should, but I don't do it very well. And in the middle, and we kind of had another moment where we started talking, and in the middle of that moment, I had this revelation. This is all my fault. This is all of my fault. 
<laughs> I'm literally like we're in the middle and, and she's kind of saying stuff back and forth and I'm realizing this is all me. And ha- anybody had that moment before in an argument where you're just like, if it's not all me, it's like 80% of my fault. And your pride keeps you arguing, but you know deep down it's me. Or have some sort <laughs> I have some part to play in this. And it's the same way with people who have hurt us. I know that they, what they did to you was wrong. I know that. But there's always a piece for us to play. And our piece is handling the healing process and the hurt that is inside of our heart. John says, if you don't handle that, it will kill you. It will, he says, if you hate a brother, you will die. Not just, oh, you can get over it, and if you forget what they did to you and just stuff it down, you'll die, and everything will be fine. He says, no, 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 if you keep it in your heart, it will kill you. If you don't deal with it, it will come out in different ways. And I realized that in that, in our little heated little thing, that I was not dealing with old hurts. And so it was actually coming out in more hurt. And I had that revelation. I was like, I got to deal with the hurt in my heart. That's on me, not on them. So the first thing he says, forgiveness takes owning our hurt. It takes ownership. It's on us. It's not on them. The second thing is we have to receive forgiveness. You see, John, I think there's a verse here. Forgiveness takes receiving forgiveness. This is how we know what love is. He says, you don't understand it if you don't know what he did for you. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. He said, this is how you know what it is. You have to receive this message for what Christ has done for you if you're ever going to give it to another person. You have to receive it. You have to receive it. You see, what happens is the closer we get to the cross, the closer we get to what Jesus did, the closer we get to the forgiveness that he gave us, our perspective starts to shift. Everything in our perspective starts to shift because I realize that God forgave Joey for all the things that I've done. And the more I come here, the more I look at the person who hurt us and I think, man, that's not that hard. Why have I been holding that in? Uh, and I've been in this, this process again, and I'm like, God, I have to have this because there's no other way. I don't know how to forgive. I don't. But I do know because I know what you did for me. And if you can do that for me, can't I do that for them? See, you can't give what you don't have. I can't give forgiveness to somebody if I don't possess it myself. If I haven't had that revelation in my heart, I can't give it to anybody. I gotta give it. Uh, we, for Abide, we get these opportunities to go and speak and we had this opportunity to go into a medical center and share what we do. And uh, I got an email asked to come and share and I was like, okay, medical center. I didn't go to med school, but I'll give it my shot, like my best shot, you know. And so I walk in, I'm a little nervous because I, I that's a different, you know, um, different platform. And, and walk in and I sit down with all these professors and I'm listening to them and they're all called doctor, Dr. Linda, Dr. This, Dr. This. And I'm like, hey, I'm Joey. I ain't got nothing except the Holy Spirit <laughs> and some passion. And I soon realized that I was a little, I was a little over my head. You ever have those moments where you're just like, I'm over my head. I got to start acting like I know what I'm talking about because I don't know. And they start talking and they start saying, he below and she below, he below, he below, he below, like all these medical terms. And they asked me something. They said something to me and I was just like, "Uh uh-huh, yeah. (laughs) What was I supposed to say? I don't know. Uh huh. Yeah, and they looked at me kind of like he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm like I don't. And so we walk in, and we were actually sharing with a bunch of students, and these kids, uh, these these college kids, started asking me questions about things, and I'm like, I literally said, I don't know. 
on to the next person because it was like a panel. And they were like, why is this guy on the panel? I don't know. But here's the thing. I didn't have anything to give. I didn't have anything to give. I'm aware of that. It's okay. We moved on. It's all right. It is what it is. But I didn't have anything to give because I never received. I never received a PhD. And it made sense. <laughs> but here's the thing. We, just, we, ha- we can't give if we don't receive. And John's saying, here's how you know how to forgive those people who have hurt you. Because your whole life, you've been doing things that have disappointed me. But guess what? I still forgave you. Jesus says, guess what? You hurt my heart. You've hurt my heart for a long time. But guess what? I still love you. There's decisions you've made that, yes, it hurt my heart, but I still forgave you. I still came down on this world, and I still bled on that cross for you because I love you. That's how you know how to do this. That's why it's worth it. That's why you have to do this. The second thing he says is forgiveness takes receiving forgiveness. But the third thing is forgiveness takes courageous, courageous action. It takes courageous, 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 courageous action. Psychologists say, if you don't act upon it, you will never fully heal. You'll never fully heal. There's a scripture here. He says, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but in actions and truth. And can I tell you, it's easy to talk about forgiving that person on your heart. And I know this talk, you guys probably have that one person on your heart or on your mind, and can I tell you, it's easy to talk about forgiving them. It's easy. It's easy to talk. And John is telling his church, he says, if you want to live this good life that I've called you, if you want to live this lifestyle of forgiveness, you have to do something about it. You have to. You have to. Like I shared, I have this, I, I'm having this experience with a, another person, and, and I, was get, I was actually practicing this, practicing this talk uh, in my living room at like 6.30 in the morning. And I was just like, oh, it feels so good. And then I get to this point, and I look at the point on the paper, and I literally sit down. Because God is like, Joe, you haven't done this one yet. I'm like, Lord, let me just talk about it. He said, no, 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 no. You haven't gotten here yet. And so he, he, he laid it on my heart. He said, you need to call them. You need to talk to them. And I'm sitting on my, on my couch. I'm thinking, no. And I'm just sitting there looking at my phone. And I pick it up, and then I just throw it on the couch, and I can't do it. But I finally do it. Actually, I'll be honest with you. I kind of chickened out. I texted him. It was all I could do. I chicken, I'll be honest with you. It was a step though, hey. Give it to me. It was a step. It was a step. <laughs> I texted him. I literally sent the text message through the phone and it just, but there was something that happened. There was something that God did in my heart. That when, I, when you walk up to a person who has hurt you and you say, look, I still love you. And yes, though you did what you did hurt me, I still forgive you. And I love you and I want the best for you. And I have dreams and all these things for you. Can I tell you, that's when actual healing happens. We can think about it, we can even talk about it. But it's until we go up to that person and connect with those people, we actually find true healing. Bridge Church, I want us to heal this morning. But can I tell you, healing takes hard steps. Very rarely does healing in our heart ever take an easy step. Very rarely. That person is waiting for you. They are. They're waiting for you. And like I said before, many times we put it on them. When are they going to act? When are they going to apologize? When are they going to tell me they're sorry for what they said to me? 
And John says, no, 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 no. Dear children, let us love with action and truth. It's on us. We've got a video here about a story of action taken. So again, a Miss O'Shea, um, again, her, her, the, the murder of her son ended up living right next door. And he talked to the apartment leaders and she was like, they were like, is this okay for her? And she said, no, I want him next to me. And he's, he was like, this lady probably is not, I don't think that's a good thing, but he ended up living next to her anyways. And she said, I had to have him live next to me. She said, because I had to forgive him. She, I, I love what she said at the end of the video, actually. She says, unforgiveness is like cancer. When someone hurts you, obviously this man hurt her. She says, if I was not able to forgive him, it would have killed me. She said, it's like cancer that spread all over my body. It would have killed me. And he actually, I believe, he actually goes over to her house every single week and helps her out with like the, the kitchen and different things. And she said, now our relationship is together and I have found true healing. Isn't that powerful? Bridge, isn't that powerful? Pa such a powerful story. Such a powerful story of forgiveness. A few, uh, uh, like a week ago, Ron Dotzler was, anybody know who Ron Dotzler is in here? Anybody have an idea? <laughs> he shared at our staff meeting. And uh, he, he said something that um, really stuck out to me. He said, at the beginning of time, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, I'm not going to assume like everybody knows that story. So the Bible says, at the beginning of time, there was two people, and they ate a piece of fruit off a tree. And because they ate it, there was sin and shame and hurt that came into the world. And that's where sin and brokenness came into our world. But Ron said, in that moment, if you notice, when they eat the fruit, it was the first reaction was to blame each other. That was their first reaction. When brokenness and sin and hurt came into the world, they said, it's your fault. And you see, when people hurt us, that's the same reaction we have. We say, it's their fault. It's your fault. And God is saying, no, this is the project for you to work on, to forgive them. Are y'all ready to get healed today? Y'all ready to feel healing? It's been good. Forgiveness is such a beautiful thing. It's so freeing. It's so beautiful. We can live to the potential and calling that God has had on our lives. But what now? The question is, what now? What's our action step? This is the hardest part. Y'all ready to go that with me? Ready to go there. We got to take action, okay? We have to take action. The first step is this. Journal about it. What does that mean? It's actually psychologically proven. If you write out the hurt that you've experienced from a person, you begin to process things differently. You start to bring back the things that happened, but can I tell you that actually is the healing process of what they've done to you. And what happens is when you start journal about that person who hurt you, basically you just start journaling, God, this is what happened. God, this is what they said about me. God, this is what they, they told those other people. God, this is what they did to me. See, this part is actually about yourself. You have to get your heart ready. You got, it's almost like a primer. You have to start priming your heart for the moment and for God to work in it. And so writing out what happened actually is an incredible way to develop your heart to get ready. The second thing is this, write them a letter. Okay, so, so the, that's kind of level one is to, to journal about it. The second piece is this, write them a letter. And here's the deal, you don't even have to give them the letter. You don't even have to do that. But what happens is when you journal, it's more about you. When you write a letter, it's more about them. You start to write and you say, Jeff, I just made that, I don't know who Jeff is. Jeff, it really hurt me that you said this. Here's what happened. Start with that. And the third piece is, um, 
well, a part of writing them a letter, you start saying, but I still love you. I still care about you. I want God to continue to work in your life. You see, writing them a letter starts to shift your perspective even more. It starts to change how you look at that person. See, you, start, you stop to look at that person like you looked at them. You start to look at that person how God looked at them. And your heart starts to shift. And the third piece is this. This is the hardest one. Call or meet with them. And you might be in here saying, Joey, I don't know about that one. You don't know what they said to me. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they've done to me. But can I tell you, just like the story on the phone, I can tell you it's, it'll be hard. Can I promise you it'll be hard? But it'll be worth it. It will be worth it. Because you'll come out of that phone call and you put the phone down and you'll start to think, oh my goodness, I should have done this 10 years ago. Man, I should have done this three years ago. Man, I should have done this last week. And you'll be free from the prison of bitterness and hurt. You'll be free. Maybe it was a boss that hurt you. Maybe it's what they said about you. Maybe it's your dad. Maybe your dad just just treated you horribly. Can I tell you, if you start journaling about your dad, your heart will change. When you start to write them a letter, your heart will change. If you call your dad this week and he doesn't pick up, call him again. Call him again. And even if they don't receive it well, can I promise you it'll be more for you than him? You'll be free. My prayer is that we're free today. We're going to spend the next uh, five minutes, three to five minutes. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing that song that we sang before. This is the action step within the house. These are the three action steps for your week. But during this song, here's what I want us to do. I want us to think about that person who hurt us. I want, to think, I want you to think about that person Maybe it makes you cry. I want you to think about that person. And I want you to pray over that person in your mind. Does that make sense? I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray for the best life for them. And you might be saying, Joey, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can pray for them. And you pray for them and you say, God, I pray for Jeff. I pray that he has the best life ever. I pray that you continue to use him to change the world. God, I pray if he doesn't know you, I pray that he comes to you. God, I pray for him. And can I tell you what happens is your heart begins to shift even right now. Bridge Church, we're going to find healing this morning. We're going to find healing this morning. If you need to pray for them with somebody, we're going to have our pastors up here too, just for this short time. But again, put them on the front of your mind, front of your heart, and lift them up to him. Let's just stand as a church together, guys. And we're going to pray for those people this morning. Was that a good word this morning, y'all? I believe we want to take steps in forgiveness. But I don't think we're done yet. I, I, I just feel like there's more that God wants to do. And Pastor Joey, thank you so much for that word. I love, I love the first point. He said, we have to own it. We have to own it. And even as Pastor Joey was even going through some of the things about journaling and, and writing a letter and, and calling and even praying, meeting with that person. For some of you, y'all like, man, that's, you have no idea. That, that might... My life may be in danger if I do something like that. For some of y'all, it's like, what if that person's passed away? What if that person's not here? Everything that he said still could be true for you. Write it out. God is so much bigger. Write it out. He hears you. Go deep with the Lord this week. Go deep with the Lord even now. 
But here's one thing that I feel just, um, that's just, it breaks my heart. Because there's some of you in here that feel like, I can't forgive myself. I can't forgive myself. I'm the one that hurt this. I'm the one that did this. I want to take ownership of this, but it's hard for me to forgive myself. If that's you, if you're struggling with that, can I just see a show of hands? I just want to pray for you. Praise God. I believe the Lord would say, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgave you. I will always choose to forgive you. I will always choose to forgive you. I really feel like even the Lord would say, I'm not disappointed in you. I, I got you. I get it. I forgive you. Do you not know? What Christ did at the cross says you are forgiven. And I want to pray for you. And if, if any of you guys need even more ministry, if there's just something that's, man, we would love to pray for you. For some of you, that might just be a next step for you. Just, just, just ask for prayer. But I'm going to pray for you. That's Robert Joe, you got anything? Come on up here real fast. We ain't done with this. I'm, we're going to pray for that. There's another thing. Go ahead. I just think some of us, sometimes we... Um... We talk about, we could talk about the hurt in a, in a negative kind of way, in a bitter kind of way, in an unforgiving kind of way, because it will spill out, it will come out. But the one that you could talk to about it the most is the Heavenly Father. And sometimes we think, well, He already knows. Some of us have even moved to a place where we're like, it's His fault, He allowed it to happen. And He is the master of all, He knows everything but he's also a heavenly father. And when you have a heavenly father, when you have a father, you can talk to your father about anything. I've been talking a lot to father, to my heavenly father. Recently, I was journaling. I was practically doing some of the very things that Pastor Joey was talking about. In the middle of the night, I'm up talking, crying, praying to the father. I'm journaling these things. Not too long ago, I found myself journaling. Why are the relationships closest to me the most broken? I didn't ask for that. I didn't deserve that, is the conversation that I was having with the Heavenly Father. But the more I process that, the more I talk about the hurt, the more I talk about the deep, deep, deep pain that's happened to me, the more He's moving me closer and closer and closer to not only forgiveness, but to freedom. Freedom in my own life, but freedom to love. Freedom to love without expectations. Freedom to love others close to me, not even close to me, without an expectation of them ever loving me back. Yeah. And it's a process. Yeah. And sometimes we got to get real with the Father. He says, you can be real with me. Yeah. You can tell me what hurts you. You can tell me that you're angry at me. You can, you can let me know those things. And I'll share one more thing. I talk about Jesus more than I talk about the enemy, but I will, I will remind us that the enemy's role in this is beyond what we can even imagine. God's word says, let's be quick to forgive so the enemy does not outsmart us. His scheme, his plan is to get us in a place where we're so focused on the hurt and the pain that turns to bitterness, rage, and anger, and murder in our hearts, that we're divided. And we can't be united with a heart like that. The enemy wants to outsmart us, and one way that he'll, ta that he'll attack the most is in pain and unforgiveness. So Pastor Rob, I'm gonna pass it to you and let you pray. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word this morning. 
God, I pray for each one of us as we are in the process of getting true freedom by forgiving. I pray that you would help us see, that you would help us experience the forgiveness that came from you first. Would you show us, God, would you break our hearts for how much you have forgiven me? And even now, God, we just, as a church, we just receive that now. It's the only way. It's the only way we're going to be able to forgive ourselves. It's the only way that we're going to be able to extend forgiveness to those who've hurt us. God, today, we own it. We own it. So, God, I just pray your grace, your peace, God, your mercy to cover us this morning. God, thank you that we, would come, we can come together and hear from you. Because I know and we know that you want each one of us to experience the good life, the God life, the life only found in you, Jesus. And it's, and it's in your matchless name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. 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 Amen, amen. amen Bridge Church. Listen. If you need additional prayer, we would love to pray with you, pray for you. God bless you. Before you leave, encourage somebody as you're walking out, okay? We'll see you guys next week. All family celebration is going to be amazing. We love you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.